Well, every single day we use water like it's endless, but the truth is India is running out of water. While cities like Bengaluru and Chennai hit day zero warnings, one man in Kolkata is literally pulling water out of thin air. Yes, we're talking about Navkaran Singh Bagga. He's the founder of Aqua Atmospheric Water Systems, a startup that's creating clean, drinkable water straight from the atmosphere. His machines don't need pipelines, groundwater or plastic bottles, just air, humidity and a bit of science. Aquos already installed systems across six Indian cities and in countries like UAE or Colombia, generating over 100 million litres of water so far. But behind the numbers is a bigger idea that water doesn't always have to come from the ground. Sometimes it has been floating all around us, waiting to be tapped and that's exactly what's been done by this very firm. So how exactly does air become water? What is the science there? How sustainable is it in the long run? Let's ask Navkaran himself. Good morning Navkaran, hope you're doing well. Let's first start with the basics. What inspired you to start AFCO? Because I was reading up a little, you're not from the world of environmental science or engineering. You studied finance and accounting. How did AFCO then happen? So, uh, you know, growing up, I always was tinkering with a lot of electronics. Uh, I would open up my video cassette player. I would, you know, tinker with the computer. I assembled my first computer at the age of uh, 11. But uh, as technologically inclined I was, uh, I don't think uh, the formal education that it requires, uh, you know, I didn't have the dedication to kind of pursue that. But it was always something that the back of my head that I wanted to do. Um, I was lucky enough to be born into a business family and in you know the first early years of my career i got to dabble in a lot of businesses um, i ran a hotel i acquired a steel rolling mill um, i ran the export business but technology was something that always was a void and in 2016 actually i had uh, just exited my steel business partially and i wasn't in control anymore so i thought this is probably the perfect time to pursue something in technology and I want to do something with regards to sustainability and water just seemed like a very ignored sector. Yeah. And the more research I did and understood that, you know, there are ways to capture humidity from the air to make water. Um, I just thought, I don't know, I discovered that a way to fix all my childhood dreams and my tinkering habits all at once. Okay, Navkaran, lovely. So tell us, how did you put that research to work, to implementation? How does your atmospheric water generation technology work? Explain the science, simple science behind it. Science is actually about class two science. Uh, it's pretty simplistic, to be honest. Uh, I remember in class two or three, we study about condensation. Yeah. It's the various forms of water. Water comes in three forms, uh, liquid, gas and solid. Now, when you say gas, there's humidity all around us in the air. And the way it changes its nature from gas to liquid is when it touches the surface, that is cold enough for it to change its form from gas to liquid. Uh, you would have noticed on any given day that if you put a cold, a cold glass of water outside or a cold bottle of water, automatically, you know, there are water droplets that collect outside. Uh, that's the process. Uh, condensation is pretty simplistic. Uh, we just figure out how to do that at large scale to be able to capture more and more water. Uh, from the air around us. So this small, simple method is being replicated at a huge, large level, large scale, on a large scale. How much Navkar and water can a typical AFCO unit produce in a day? Just so our audience knows what, what uh, you know, production unit are we looking at? What kind of quantity are we talking about? So AFCO units come in different scales. We have our 50 liter per day systems. 150, 300 and 500. So we can do various modules of different sizes. Our single largest installation is a huge, uh, in a big uh, corporate headquarters, where we're capturing 30,000 liters of water from air every day. Okay. So the scale is not a challenge. We can scale up to as much as we want. Okay, lovely. And how sustainable is the process of extracting water from air in the long term? Because you're you know, technically also taking all the humidity away. So what happens then? So effectively speaking, you know, I, this question comes up a lot. Yeah. A lot of people ask us that if you take the humidity away, what will happen? Uh, so the, the stance here is very simple. We have both a finite and infinite amount of water in the air around us mm -hmm. and works on pressure differences. So every time you take some water away from the air, immediately because of low pressure, it gets replenished again. 
from another source nearby so in terms of renewable it is actually the one of the most renewable things out there uh, as close to solar just like the sun rises every day and you capture solar heat and solar waves to generate electricity similarly you can capture humidity in the air for it to get replenished instantly and are your machines uh, are your models solar compatible or capable of running on renewable energy as well so we just launched a new product which we did research on for about 18 months it's called aqua helios that is a 100% solar based system that works on a slightly different technology to our core traditional technology that we have uh, that is a system that uses solar heat desiccants uh, to basically capture humidity around us and it's a self running system which requires no external power whatsoever as compared to the conventional systems that we have okay let's now talk about the implementation part so we're looking at six cities where your model is being adopted it's doing really well how does your system perform in monsoon versus dry season so your model works based on external factors humidity being the first most important factor so all these coastal areas all cities with high humidity mumbai chennai etc are bound to do well your product is bound to do well what about the rest okay no so no from our perspective so i'll run you through parallels mm. uh, when you talk about renewable technologies renewable technologies are dependent on external factors available in the in nature or the weather around us right now ideally uh, solar power can virtually work anywhere but would you put it in scandinavian countries where you have 6 months of no sunlight you wouldn't try right? uh, similarly our technology requires humidity therefore yes it is more apt to be deployed in areas with high humidity so yeah you know chennai bangalore mumbai goa uh, few places in india that i'm naming i have a lot of installations in the middle east uh, since all the large cities in the middle east are actually coastal whether it's dubai doha uh, you know tamam jeddah uh, oman has muscat is also coastal so also southeast asia so when we look at the spectrum of uh, the area that we can cater to we flourish more in tropical environments yeah. but also where energy might be cheaper to weigh off the energy misbalance so you know given the way the current world's population is actually placed about 50 55% of the world's population lives in tropical climates and from that perspective we can virtually cater to a lot of areas like we do have systems in south america we have systems in africa we have systems in southeast asia in india and in the middle east okay lovely have you also been asked navkaran how does your system work when it comes to purification so that's really not the first most thing that your model is doing you're actually ensuring that water gets generated so air turns into water is what your system does but purification i'm assuming is also an important part of it so how does your system compare to traditional water purification systems in terms of quality and efficiency effectively and this is actually a very good question because people get confused all the time mm. well, what people uh, like to draw parallels with in our case is that to purification systems but we're actually not a purification system right we're an additional source of water uh, so our comparison should be made with bore wells yeah. and rivers and lakes not really with ROs the RO is simply a process of purification post collection of water whether it comes from a tap where it comes from a lake or a river or a bore well right so our systems are capturing water from the air and then it goes down to traditional purification system now you know the purification industry is very old and we rely on the similar filters that are available in the market to purify the water uh, we do have some proprietary purification techniques that we do to add higher amount of minerals and make sure the microbes are taken care of but the idea here is to split up the two techs which we have done are primary tech is to capture humidity in the air to generate water mm. uh, the purification is just post process so similar to let's say again going drawing parallel with solar solar panels capture the power that they get from the sun and then they pass it through various inverters and batteries to deploy it how they seem fit uh, that's very similar to how we would also look at how, what we do we capture the humidity and then what you can do with the water is pretty simple Okay so capturing humidity turning it into water that's the process you follow there's there's so much thought that's gone into it Navkaran but I do want to ask you do you think this is still a neglected space or have you actually noticed through the last 6 7 years since you began uh this initiative have you noticed a shift in people's mindset 
unfortunately uh, as much as i'd like people's mindset to shift it's not shifting anytime soon to water is it absolutely ignored commodity yeah. uh, people don't pay much attention to it uh, because the water cycle is very brief uh, when i say water cycle uh, you know think about why people are working on renewable energy people are working on renewable energy because they know that every time you take 1 liter of crude oil down, out from an uh, oil well it could take thousands of years sometimes even hundreds of thousands of years to get replenished in water the case is it's down to the next rain so ideally we don't have a water problem we have a water management problem in addition to that water in countries is not charged at the real cost of that water in terms of transmission in terms of filtration so till the time water actually gets charged at the price that it should really be valued at water is always going to be an ignored sector yes we are seeing more and more companies adopt our systems for the sake of sustainability but people aren't still doing it because they want they see that there's a dearth of water they just take water for granted we all take water for granted and to a large extent till our like like i began by saying till our taps start running out uh, but navkaran aqua footprint in india we've we're talking about these six cities in india around the world you are expanding how are you looking at expanding further so tell us a little bit about your future plans and also going back to the drawing board did you draw inspiration from other countries who were the first to start talking about this model start proposing this model to the world for instance israel so i think uh, with israel it's been more about talk than actual deployments um, so no i i don't think we really drew parallels or inspiration from existing tech yes uh, you know there have been many players who have come and gone in the space aqua is not the first uh, air to water company in the world it will not be the last air to water company in the world the difference with how we operate vis-a-vis others is that our deployment is moving more and more towards large scale corporate deployment we're not trying to sell you know single appliance based products like other people are trying to our focus is to do large scale drinking water deployment uh, across hotels it parks large corporate parks so we're catering more as a b2b solution provider mm-hmm. a, a, another good thing that we've added to our business model recently over the last 24 months is we have something called aqua wow which is water on want that's our entire opex play where our clients don't have to buy our machines and have long term contracts to pay every for every liter extracted from the air very similar to how solar you know rooftop solarization has happened where people pay for the power generated similarly in our case we are charging our clients for every liter generated that's the differentiation in how we are working in terms of our business model and from a product perspective our products are really small and deployable on rooftops so our products are designed to be large scale rooftop deployments so when it comes to other players out there uh, long story short no we're very different in technology in product and also in uh, our go to market the several options that you're offering to your clients to the consumers so you've spoken of that in detail but if you were to put a number to how uh, much of your equipment your product your machines have been put to use since its launch can you give, can you give us one to be honest to, from 2017 to 22 was a very big struggle in fact 20 was 2020 was supposed to be a great year for us but then covid hit and we lost about uh, about 1.2 million dollars over the borders mm. um, and then it took us two years to kind of reengineer ourselves change our product line change our whole uh, you know our ethos on who we are as a company are we a solutions company are we a product company then we decided we're a solutions company and uh, we have seen a three times growth year on year every year in the last three years okay so the last three years essentially have been remarkable now karan you began with a really small team so tell us about the growth in terms of numbers since when and how did you first begin what's the strength that we're looking like or looking at in your team right now eight years nine years since so i started with an initial team of eight people uh, currently we're at 48 um we just set up our manufacturing facilities in chennai uh, we we can we actually based out of kolkata but we we converted our kolkata center into our r&d setup and we manufactured change our manufacturing team to chennai we now have 48 people uh, and the way we're scaling up now by the end of this year we might be about 70 to 70 to be lovely enough karan and lastly before we let you go let's zoom out a little how much of a difference you think players like yourself are making can make to global water crisis 
see to be very honest the way i look at it is that um, for every liter we extract from the air we save roughly 3 to 4 liters of ground water water that does not have to go down reverse osmosis and have reject water water that does not have to go down transmission loss so from that perspective every liter extracted from the air is equal to 3 to 4 liters of ground water saved the other aspect here is that when we look at urbanization where essentially an urban solution as we get more and more urban users to adopt our systems then the the pressure that the utilities have in terms of supplying water to the major cities will steadily go down thereby they'll be able to use that particular capital availability and take it to places that need more uh, tier 2 rural semi rural so the idea here is to be the stop gap air to water will never be the entire source of water anywhere in the world and i can say this as counterproductive as it is to my business uh, we are a stop gap solution to basically come in and become renewable water and understand that wherever there is a need we will be there but the long term infrastructure play has to be a combination of all technologies in water that's wastewater treatment grey water recycling rain water harvesting bore wells and air to water currently air to water is not recognized as a proper source of water that's the kind of awareness that we want to create that people should think that they can also look at our technology as an alternate source of water Okay that's a lot of honesty packed all in one answer. Thank you so much Navkaran for sharing your story and for creating magic out of thin air. Thank you for joining us here on the Breakfast Club. We had into a very quick break with that we're not done as yet. We'll be right back with a very special conversation. See you in just a bit.